Hello, I'm IBX Toy Cat, and one of my favorite things to hear from the viewers of my videos is that something I said in one of them was what got people back into playing survival Minecraft in a serious, heavy way. The reason I love this is because, of course, we all have Minecraft as a shared passion of ours, but the interesting thing about getting into it is that you need to have some focus on what to do because there's so much to do in a sandbox game like this that sometimes you can feel overwhelmed and not sure exactly what you should be working on, and that's why I really enjoyed the response to my five projects you perhaps have in your Minecraft world video because instead of talking about exact things that people should build, which is what people always tend to do. Instead, my attitude was just, hey, here are some things that will help out in any Minecraft world. Build them however you want. I'm not going to tell you how. I'm just going to say that having the general idea will help you. And that's something that really seemed to resonate with people, of giving people ideas, but giving them the freedom to do them however they like. And that's why I figured, let's go through five more ideas that I think every Minecraft world should have, and that every Minecraft world can benefit from having, but that you can do in any way you really like to. And to start with examples of what exactly I actually mean by that, let's go uh, towards the 0, zero far world, because you might notice on Minecraft Bedrock, we have our coordinates in the top left at all times. On Minecraft Java, you can press F3 and bring up your coordinates, but basically your coordinates are always going to be important in your Minecraft world, and that's why having your 0, zero be tracked is important, but let's go there now and show you what I mean. So the 0, zero point in your world is also known as the world origin, if you're talking about map terms, and the reason it's so important to track this, and in my opinion, what I've done is I've got a beacon uh, coming directly out there, I've got a very clear build at the 0, zero. I've even got, as you can see, a map wall over here, which shows off the entire world in map form. The reason I have all of this stuff right here at my world spawn is because, one, this is going to be very close to wherever your world spawn is, so it's important to know roughly where that is. Two, there's something kind of cool about zero, zero on your coordinates, right? Everyone can agree that when you hit zero and zero, it's kind of fun in that way, but the way more important thing, the reason that this is a build I recommend for everyone, not in this way, this is terrible, I totally agree, but the reason I recommend you have something here is because it's a great way to keep track of what's in which direction of your Minecraft world. This can be the origin build from which you know which direction everything is. For instance, I know this build right here, everything to the north is going in the negative of the z-axis, everything to the left of it is going the negative on the x-axis, and vice versa for these other two directions, which means I can always work out, based on my coordinates, where I am in relation to this point right here. It's also super handy if you ever decide to use maps, because looking at this map right here, we can see that when we go to the top left of it, we'll be on the top left of that map, and so on and so forth. If we have a much bigger map like this one, right here, we can see which direction we're going from this world spawn based on our relation to zero, zero. You can do absolutely anything you want here, by the way. It can be simple as a tower of blocks. It can be as simple as a beacon, or you can do something, uh, you know, around it if you really want to. Here's what I decided to do. Um, but you can do much more complex things, much more simple things, but this is just a great point to have in your world because then you'll know where the world origin is. Uh, you'll know somewhere that's near spawn you can direct people to, and also you'll be able to know where everything is in relation to each other because because you can know it in relation to a single point, and that single point being the world origin is the most logical thing. Obviously, my kind of take on this was I decided to put a giant map wall nearby, a map wall that has so many maps that it literally lags my game that you can see happening right now, um, because again, we're displaying 255 separate maps. It's a really fun little thing I've done here with the map wall, but you don't need to have a 15 by 15 wall of maps if you want to do this. You can have one be 10 by 10 or 5 by 5 or even just 3 by 3 to get the achievement, but having, uh, you know, some form of mapping, having some way to work out where everything is in your Minecraft world is going to be really handy if, like me, you have a ridiculous number of builds. You can see looking around here, like, okay, we've got this over there, we've got that over there, we've got like a little village over there that I've also uh, altered and done my own stuff to. Uh, keeping track of all of this stuff at one place, also there's a never brick fortress down there, um, so keeping track of all of this stuff is going to be tricky without a map, even if you know your world inside out like I do. Every now and then I forget that like, oh yeah, there's that little swamp over there, or like, oh yeah, there's my partially drained ocean monument. It's really cool to see this stuff on a map and it's a good way to keep track of progress, which is why I always recommend do something at zero, zero. That zero, zero thing might be a map wall. That zero, zero thing might just be some way to commemorate that point. But the more effort you put into this part of your world, the easier it'll be to keep track of where everything else in relation to that point. The second idea for a big project that you can kind of customize and do whatever you want with is definitely going to be some form of insane farm. So one of the things that people to this day still recognize my Let's Play world for is the insane sugarcane farm, where, you know, I just, I, I really like sugarcane farming, even back in the 360 days. So what I did is I just made myself a giant sugarcane farm going all the way to sky height. Then I made it five, uh, you know, like layers deep. And then I made it super, super long. And as you can see, the amount of sugarcane we can produce is pretty darn intense. And obviously it required a lot of dirt. Like we had to mine a lot of dirt specifically for this. And that's how we end up with the flat area as a whole side of note. But we have a lot of dirt that comes as a result of this project. We have a lot of sugarcane, more than we could ever need. But it's a really fun project to make because you're kind of becoming the master of a resource. And although the sugarcane farm is one 
one example. Uh, like I said before, this isn't just about one example of something. If you want, if you're more of a techie person, if you love the redstone side of Minecraft, notice where we started this video. We started right next to my bamboo farm, and the bamboo farm, for the most part, the first two layers at least, are automated, or the first three layers, and I'm always expanding that side of things, because this is a farm that can work in an automated way. You can do this exact same thing with sugarcane, if you prefer that to be a thing, but all you need to do is have some form of collection method. I have a minecart hopper roaming around continuously and placing all the things it gets into this chest right here, but all you need to do is you need to have some form of collection method, some form of pushing method, and some form of detection. So what we have right here, again, it's quite simple. We just have, oh yeah, where there is a piston and there is an observer. The observer powers the piston. When the uh, bamboo hits three blocks tall, then the pistons all go out and actually just to prove that point right here, let me pick up some and let me show you what happens because when we grow the bamboo to the top, they all get knocked down and then they all go onto this slab right here which can be picked up by the minecart hopper. It's a pretty simple process actually but it's one that's actually very, very, very satisfying to work on, very satisfying to see in any scale but if you don't like techie farms and you don't like insane farms that just go all the way to sky height because, you know, we kind of have both right here, you can go for anything in between if you want. You can go for a farm that covers a huge distance. Again, I've seen so many cool examples of this. My my one is just, I have this little area, you know, this giant carrot, which, well, two giant carrots, which are very different to each other, but I've, I have just this giant carrot area with a lot of carrots. It's cool to look at. Imagine this, but going much, much bigger. You can make really intense farms, especially out of wheat, especially out of these other things, and I've seen so many wonderful examples, and so can you see them because this is a YouTube video. But the point I'm trying to say here is that extreme farms are one of the coolest forms of projects to see in their fruition. They also give you kind of mastery of a single resource and then by mastering a single resource You'll never need to you know worry about the number of carrots you have again or the number of potatoes You have again or bamboo or sugarcane or pretty much any natural resource can be farmed And that's something I really like if you want to you know if you have a lot of farms You've been playing Minecraft a while, but you want to get into things try a bee or a honey farm or a honeycomb farm There are lots of types of farms, uh, you know We're talking literally dozens of different types of farms and uh, they range in complexity depending on what you want in your Minecraft world So the next Next idea I have here is one that's not going to be revolutionary in the slightest because I'm going to say make a chest room and obviously 90 plus percent of you watching this video already have a chest room that seems dumb on the surface because yeah everyone has chests in their Minecraft world but what if I said make a chest room that's more than what you have right now make a more exciting version of your chest room make a better organized version of your chest room and you can do this in a lot of different ways one such way I mean what I did in my world because I've always had this chest room in my cave house for a while but it's ugly and it's kind of got this problem where it's lots of blocks and it's not even very well organized. So what I decided to do this where you can see it's much cleaner to lay out. It's also made from the same block, in this case, white wool. Also, everything's organized into chests with nice little signs. I, I, I like that they're birch signs, but I mean, you can kind of hate that if you want to. And this is a really basic version of what you can do. You can go way more complex than this. I just kind of hate storage in Minecraft. I'm really bad at it. Um, but like, there's lots of way more fun ways to do it. So for instance, one of the things you might not have noticed about my giant map wall is that it actually is a bad barrel made out of barrels entirely. This means that I had myself effectively a storage room. It's a very messy storage room that's apparently very uh, glitch as well, but I had myself a storage room inside of here where I was going to be able to store every single item in a barrel of its own so I could fill an entire, you know, barrel, or maybe I think it was going to be four barrels uh, filled with glass in the end. I could have four barrels to be filled with jungle wood uh, and then, you know, so on and so forth with all the different wood types that we could come across. I thought it was a really fun idea and it's something that isn't coming into fruition mostly because of the extreme lag that comes from using this many items item frames. Pro tip, item frames, uh, you know, they work great when you don't put maps in them. When you put maps in them, most Minecraft engines don't tend to like that. I think console is the one exception to that rule, but rip console edition, right? But um, so yeah, you can have yourself a barrel made of barrels. You can have yourself a normal chest room. And it's funny because in this case, a couple of things I built in creative have actually inspired people to build things in survival. So I figured I'd show them off as well because having yourself an open chest to be your chest room is a super fun idea. In fact, this doesn't even be a chest room. This can be an entire house if you so choose. You know, it can have a chest storage area, but you can make a little house in here if you like to. Um, the idea of an open chest to be a way kind of like to invite people in, but also be a fun giant build, I really like by itself. But again, there's so many different ways you can do this. So for instance, one thing I like is this one right here where we've got the open chest room as a chest storage room on both sides. But if you want, you can literally make the walls of your chest room out of chests. And this has like kind of two upsides. One is it's really cool to just see this many individual chests. Two, if we, uh, you know, look uh, a little bit further away is you can make your 
yourself a, a house out of chests, which means it will disappear before everything else does. For some reason, Minecraft renders chests in much shorter than everything else, and you can effectively therefore have a house which is invisible until you get within a certain distance of it. I love that as a concept, but yeah, you can do this in wood if you find that chests are too resource intensive, or orange clay or wool or something like that, but there's so many different ways to make a chest house, or a chest room, or a chest area in your Minecraft world, and uh, that's why you should totally do one. But even if you have a chest room that you're perfectly happy with, whether it's a great one or a terrible one, uh, there's a really fun kind of secondary project in here, which is to try and fill a chest with every single resource. Because of course, filling a chest or double chest with, uh, you know, cobblestone, it's not going to be particularly hard, but trying to fill a chest entirely with granite, andesite, and diorite, though, you know, like individually I should say, that can be a little harder. And one of the fun little challenges that can come from a chest room is trying to make a chest filled with every single resource in the game. There are, you know, this can be like one of your big long-term Minecraft accomplishments. Can you get a chest entirely filled with Nevrak? I mean, probably pretty easily. Can you get a chest filled entirely with clay? Sure, but there are some blocks that get way, way harder, and it can be a fun little challenge as to how many resources in Minecraft you can fully complete this way. And then that also ties back into the farming thing, because filling in a chest full of sugarcane is easier if you have a farm. And yeah, a challenge to you, a challenge to really anyone, is how many items can you fill, uh, you know, a chest with entirely, or a double chest, if you're so inclined, uh, in Minecraft. Because, uh, yeah, for me, I've got maybe like seven different items I've maxed out a double chest with, but that's without trying, uh, you know, majorly at it. This is one of those fun, super long-term projects that you can always work on in the background while working on other things, and that's what I love about it. Also, since we're talking about the accomplishment kind of side project here, I'll give you a bonus build. That's right, it's six builds in today's video, because this is this is a bonus one that doesn't count on the numbering list, um, because one of the things people love looking in this world uh, is one of the most basic inventions. It's just a giant cube made of cobblestone. I filled a cube of uh, cobblestone, and inside there, you know, like it's a lot of ice and stuff, it's kind of interesting. I have a giant cube filled of nebrak. Inside of there, I have a gold farm, and then I have a giant, uh, you know, end stone cube. But the thing about these three cubes is people love looking at them because, again, there's something about this that signifies overworld never end, and there's also something about it that signifies I had at least 12,500, because they're 50 by 50 by 50 cubes, um, because they're, I, that means I had 12,500 minimum blocks to make these three things, and it's kind of cool to, sh again, in the same way having a double chest filled of things is a cool way to show stuff, but you have to look at it, you know, like visually in a world, uh, try to make a challenge of making cubes, maybe smaller than this, like 16 by 16, let's say, try to make cubes or try to make some form of monument of every single resource in Minecraft. That is a really fun idea that will keep you working in a game and also give you a cool physical representation of what you've done in the end. Because I feel like one of the problems most people have with their fun little collection projects is they make these really fun goals, but they're not very easy, uh, you know, to show visually. And something nice about having done something really impressive in Minecraft is being able to see it, whether for yourself or if you're the sort of person who likes to show off, then you can show it off people. Because, you know, right now I'm totally flexing all of you that look how much Neverack I mined, look how much Endstone I've totally mined. I mean, you can actually watch live streams of me just doing nothing with mine Endstone because I'm trying to destroy these end islands. Uh, it, it's a whole thing. But with all that Endstone, I made a giant cube and isn't it pretty? But you know what's prettier? What's inside the Endstone cube right here? Um, it's actually a really weird space on the inside of here, I would say. But the reason I mention this is because I've used the inside of my Endstone cube because it's perfectly overlaid with a tiny jungle biome. Or like, it's long story on how this became a jungle biome, but I have a jungle biome entirely surrounded by ice right here, and this means that I can get myself the rarest type of Minecraft villager if I'm so inclined. If you don't know what the rarest type of Minecraft villager is, it's probably the jungle villager, if not the swamp village. Because when two villagers breed, their offspring is dependent on which biome they have their children in. But one thing I totally recommend in Minecraft is making your own artificial village in a biome of your choosing, depending on which villager type is your favorite, because if you like having green villages, I think they're kind of interesting, um, that then obviously you need to set up a village in a swamp so you can get them. There are no naturally spawning swamp villages, although sometimes other biomes can spread into them, but that's a rare thing you need a particular seed someday for. If you already have a survived world, and I suspect you do if you're watching this video, um, and if you want to get swamp villages, you need to set up a village in a swamp. A, a village just needs to have at least two villages, some form of beds, some more breeding point and work and stuff to do, and then you feed the villagers, and what ends up happening is they'll produce more. If you're in a jungle biome, you'll get some jungle villagers. If you're in a swamp, you'll get swamp, etc, etc, etc. I think the three most interesting villager types are the three rarest, which is jungle, you're seeing right now, swamp, you're seeing right now, and also I would say the tiger biome, there's a certain charm to them, the whiteness of them, uh, you know, like 
like the, the coats they're wearing, which people don't expect. Um, but yeah, you can make any color of villager if you want using this technique. And then if you want, you can ship them off around the world using boats, which means you can start a village from scratch using your favorite type of villager, or you can start a farm, or you can just put them in random places if you want. Uh, you can use this exact strategy to have villagers in very bizarre random places. I've shown it in my never and my end before, but long story short, you can put villagers anywhere in the world you like. So to round out the video here, let's go through one more thing in Minecraft that you totally need, I would say. Uh, it's going to hopefully be a fun little uh, survival impetus, but it's something that you really need to have in your world if you want to benefit, because how can people respect you if you don't respect yourself? And how can you respect yourself if you don't make a giant statue of your skin in Minecraft? As you can see, this is Chairman Toycat presiding over the rest of the world. There is something really weird and out of place about this, but I really did love building it. I really do think a skin statue is a goofy, but surprisingly fun uh, build idea. But no, this isn't actually what my last uh, thing right here is. What I actually think that every world should have somewhere in them is going to be some form of blue ice highway. It doesn't even need to be blue ice, actually. I'd say if you really want, you can skimp and you can go with, uh, you know, uh, packed ice. You can even go regular ice if you want to, because boats and ice right now in Minecraft are the fastest form of transport. If you want to get from A to B, the fastest way is to use a boat. Let me show you right here. I've got a pathway which starts at about Z483, as you can see. And if I want to, within just a few short seconds, I can go to 583 and 683. And what's that? 783, 883. You can see how we're traveling at like 80 blocks a second or something like that. Faster than the world can even generate. So if you look down below, you see pretty much nothing down there. And uh, yeah, this is a really fast way to get around in the overworld. It's all mentioned on screen recently. They're building uh, like a 10,000 block bridge uh, that they're going to walk across. It's like, yeah, you could walk across a bridge or you could set up one of these. This, again, it goes much, much, much faster. It's a very fun thing. And I literally just went, by the way, 2,000 blocks in the blink of an eye in that amount of time it took you to see right there. That's pretty wild if you ask me. And while I'll admit you need to be using blue ice for this to work, because blue ice is the most condensed form of ice, it's also the slipperiest. Um, if you're using packed ice, it won't go quite as fast. It'll go only 60 blocks a second. Um, but the fact that you can go, uh, you know, like pretty fast, some of the fastest speeds in Minecraft without using a minecart, without having to fly, like, you know, I usually do to get around places, that is, uh, you know, pretty incredible, pretty stunning by itself, I'd say. The real crazy thing to me is the fact that you can do this in the never as well, where of course, when you're transferring between portals, you're going at eight times the speed of the overworld. And uh, yeah, it's ridiculous to see blue ice in the never, but there's nothing about the never that suggests it shouldn't work here because blue ice doesn't melt under light conditions. And because there's no actual heat in the never, uh, blue ice at least, and packed ice as well, do not melt when they're in the never, which means though even we're in this, uh, you know, ridiculously hot dimension. I mean, it looks hot. It is hot. It's literally covered in lava down below. We can make ourselves these crazy highways and then get from one point to another in the never absurdly fast. Look at the speed, look at the efficiency of this, and the fact that I'm going over a sea of lava, it's absurd, the juxtaposition is crazy, it looks intense, it looks cool, and when people see your giant blue ice highway in the never, they're going to be pretty darn impressed with it, I would say. I will recommend, right now, protect it, because uh, although it won't be, uh, you know, melted by the never, it can be blown up by gas, so be cautious of that, I would say. But other than that, I would say the fact that you can travel so, so fast between such remote points over literally lava, it's a fun thing to do, and it's something you totally need to look into, and that's why it doesn't matter where you decide to make your blue ice pathway, uh, having one in general is the fastest form of transport, and there's somewhere in your world that you can benefit from transport for. It's also, of course, super useful for use in the end, where you can, uh, you know, get between the end and the end islands, or between the end islands and the outermost, uh, you know, edges of the area. It's something that's very tricky to do with other forms of transport. I mean, flying over the end is something you don't often want to do, and uh, yeah, basically it's a fun way to be able to bring things with you while you do so as well. I, uh, you know, use this, if you don't know, to start a village farm at the very end of this. Yeah, I basically went through all the effort of placing literally a thousand blocks of ice just so I could bring villagers with me, but it was totally worth it because now I have a fun little civilization of villagers running around my end. Fun fact, these villagers running around my end, actually, I started them with two jungle villagers that came directly from uh, the thing from earlier. That's right, all these Minecraft projects tie in together very slightly because that's the cool thing about Minecraft. Once you have a long-term survival world of some form, you start to realize that everything you do in one area will affect everything in all the other areas. But yeah, basically, today's video is just here to let you know that, hey, did you know placing blue ice pathways real good. Did you know there's so many things in Minecraft that you can be doing? And although it feels overwhelming, not knowing which one you should do at any given point in time, hopefully this video has just given you a solid idea, working towards an idea that you come up with in your head. Again, 
not one that I've told you. Uh, you know, like, again, you can remix any of these ideas how you like. You can take your idea from this video that you don't want to do any of these things. But whatever your idea is, sticking to it and trying to make it true is something I really love to see. Please do send me any pictures or put them on the IBX Toycat subreddit, r slash IBX Toycat. Um, if you really, you know, if, you, if there's something you've done off this video. Because there's something about showing other people your Minecraft builds that is immensely satisfying. So I'd love to see yours and I hope you have a good idea after watching this video. And uh, yeah, otherwise, if you enjoyed this and want to see more, please do like this video and let me know. Again, I don't think it performs very well in terms of views or in terms of money or anything like that. But um, what it does perform well is in terms of helping people get back into Minecraft. And it's something I love so much uh, to inspire in people. So it's something I try my best to do today. And I hope you appreciate that. Mm. Subscribe if you want to see more videos like this on my channel. Because, you know, I honestly, you give me more subscribers, you see more of my videos. And then I get the ego of being like, haha, people care about me. And you know what? Do you want people to care about me? I'd like for you to like people to care about me. So please do that, maybe. Anyway, thank you very much for watching, because I'll see you all next time. Goodbye.